Right. When we get started, um, first of all, thank you everyone for coming to uh, this panel's discussion talk, discussing scaling out OpenStack clouds and enterprise. We've got a great group of panelists uh, who will be uh, talking about their experience and what they're seeing today in the industry. So some by way of introduction, my name is Kenneth Hoy. I'm a technology evangelist at Rackspace, and I'll be monitoring this panel. Uh, if, uh, why don't we start by just kind of going down the line, and you could quickly give your name and talk about what you're doing or what you were doing <laughs> around OpenStack. Hi, my name is Caroline McCrory. I am now Senior Director of Research at GigaOM. I was the head of product at Piston Cloud, which was a, an enterprise uh, OpenStack software company. Yes. Hello, I'm Jan Holzer from Red Hat, and um, I do a lot of different things in Red Hat, usually anything around emerging technologies, evangelizing technology, but over the past two years really focusing on OpenStack and helping customers to deploy OpenStack and also supporting what we call an early adopter program around OpenStack, not just with customers, but also partners. Great, I'm Jesse Proudman. Uh, up until last week, I was the founder and CEO of Blue Box. Uh, I hired a new CEO, announced uh, Monday this week from Tier 3. Now I'm founder and CTO of Blue Box. Uh, we do on-demand hosted private cloud. Uh, business has been around for 11 years. Sorry, I don't have a microphone. I have to share one with you. So uh, my name is Boris Ransky. I am co-founder and chief marketing officer at Morantis. So uh, based on my title, I think it's easy to figure out that I run marketing. Also, uh, our training uh, team reports into me. And uh, I'm also responsible for kind of personally curating some of the um, strategic partner relationships um, between Morantis and uh, um, OpenStack ecosystem partners. Uh, for those of you that don't know Marantis, we are the pure play OpenStack guys. We have three lines of business, subscription business uh, for Marantis OpenStack distribution that is similar to many other distribution options available out there, uh, training and services. So that's a summary. Thank you, Boris. Uh, my name is Manju Ramanath Pura. I work for Hitachi Data Systems. I'm a CTO with uh, Hitachi. Uh, my primary role in the past uh, year and a half has been to really define uh, overall strategy for Hitachi around uh, OpenStack. Uh, Hitachi itself plays uh, very strong in the storage business as well as the converged infrastructure business. Uh, when we look at OpenStack, essentially we are looking at really building a cloud portfolio built on OpenStack and that's the uh, group that I'm uh, working with to build the strategy. Okay, thank you all. So um, just let you know, in terms of the format, I've got a few questions I'm going to throw out to the panel. Um, they can all, they can, everyone would choose to an answer those questions, or you can choose to only answer some of them. But we'd like to have some back and forth, obviously, between all of you. And um, we also, you notice that we have a mic in the middle. So at some, hopefully sometime during the, uh, this session, we're able to take some audience questions. If you do have those questions, um, my suggestion is you kind of start lining up in the middle um, so that we know that you have questions to ask. And, that way we can, everyone can hear your questions and it will get captured for the YouTube video. So the first thing I want to ask though is, there's, so, there's been a lot of conversations in the past year about is OpenStack actually ready for the enterprise? And in fact, if enterprises are even interested or, or rather they think it's ready for the enterprise. So kind of a very general question, based on what you're seeing the market feel today, are in fact, what is the state of enterprise adoption for OpenStack? Anyone can take this question. I can start, I guess, before I have to give away my microphone, so I'll, I'll take the opportunity to use the microphone. Um, so the first part of the question about whether or not OpenStack is ready for the enterprise, and uh, I, I don't think that there is a, a, a kind of, you know, yes or no type of answer. I don't think that uh, um, anything is, you know, ever completely ready for anything, uh, and I confirm that indeed uh, it is not an absolutely perfect product and uh, there are challenges with OpenStack uh, as are challenges with any software product. But um, as far as the adoption is concerned, I think that uh, um, this year it is uh, clearly starting to take off and uh, I'm uh, kind of uh, glad to see that uh, 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 about two years ago, um, I've you know kind of approximated the uh, um, path for uh, adoption of OpenStack by various segments, and uh, 
uh, the first kind of line of adoption was really primarily around the infrastructure vendors just, you know, kind of, uh, you know, writing drivers for OpenStack or playing and tinkering with it. So it was just complete vendor fest. And then the next path was really the very hardcore tech savvy guys um, primarily in the uh, uh, SaaS Web 2.0 segment that started adopting it. And uh, uh, two years ago I said that uh, 2014, I think, is going to be the year when uh, enterprises are going to start uh, really kind of, uh, um, you know, taking OpenStack seriously. And based on what we're seeing uh, um, from our customer base, as well as uh, uh, based on what we're seeing from the uh, vendor announcements, the traditional vendor, uh, enterprise vendor announcements, is absolutely uh, the case that enterprises are uh, adopting OpenStack today. So, it, you know, I can, I can say that, you know, we have customers, enterprise customers that are adopting it, but I think that another interesting proof point is uh, the fact that uh, just recently, uh, all the three large enterprise vendors, IBM, Cisco, and HP, made these announcements that we're committing a billion dollars to OpenStack. And the reason why they're doing it is because they're seeing their enterprise customers ask them to have some sort of OpenStack strategy. And I think just the virtue of them announcing it is a proof point of enterprises kind of uh, tracking with OpenStack. Yeah, so I, I would agree. I would have said, yeah, first part is lowercase yes, and second part is uppercase yes. Uh -huh. um, so clearly OpenStack has a huge brand, has a huge awareness in, our, in everybody's customer base. Every customer wants to talk about OpenStack. If you don't talk about OpenStack today, they just go to another vendor and talk to them about OpenStack. Mm -hmm. um, but I think from an implementation perspective, I would probably agree with everybody on the panel. I always say it's still a box of razor blades today uh, for many people. Um, it's not really a simple to install, like say a VMware perception, you just come install, run it. It requires a lot of hand-holding and we run still through a lot of education as well, yet mm -hmm. you shouldn't just take your enterprise workload, rehost it and run OpenStack, but actually do something meaningful with it. So I think right now we see a lot of customers who have a lot of interest, um, but the usual suspects, say on the FSI sector, internet companies, as you said, Web 2.0, who actually do meaningful workloads and run meaningful installations um, because in all we've seen from the user survey there are not yet a huge amount of very large scale OpenStack installations. There are a lot of medium sized installations and the large scale ones they're often then trapped in prior releases because there have been a lot of challenges in upgrading, stability, all of those things but I think we get there over time absolutely and we've made huge strides in Havana, Ice House and Juno around upgrades, around stability. Mm -hmm. I think networking is still a fairly complex topic and I think it also exposes an issue around skilling. I mean, a lot of customers were used to, I just have regular sysadmins and now suddenly I really need like a network architect, a storage architect. I really need to even consider application architecture for those deployments. Um, I think that from my perspective, I'm finding that there's a terminology issue. So since a lot of people are using VMware, they have in their minds, HA is the way VMware does HA, or FT is the way VMware does FT. So a lot of the customers that I've come across, um, even in the research space now, they're all wondering, I want to be able to deploy OpenStack, like you said, you know, Jan, very easily, like the way if I could just buy vSphere and just put it in. And with I, I believe that OpenStack is now maturing to be able to get to that perspective. There's more people that are contributing the code. There's more people who understand um, enterprise operations of IT. And it's bringing that type of DNA into the OpenStack ecosystem and putting in that code and have, having people understand how to actually do those sort of deployments. I'm a big fan of this term service catalog. Uh, I talk about it a lot. I, I think uh, OpenStack has a ways to go from a service catalog development perspective before we really see widespread adoption. So uh, I use this analogy of a tree. You've got a, a strong trunk, core services, compute, networking, storage. For the most part, we've got the kinks worked out there, uh, with, with the exception of networking, as everybody's joking about. Uh, and then off, off the branches, you've got additional services, database, caching, queuing, load balancing, these, these types of technologies. And to me, the OpenStack technology has not evolved the additional services really necessary to architect modern web applications on top of the platform uh, effectively today. So much of the adoption that we see are uh, implementations where uh, it's dev test, well, I guess I'm getting into workloads now, but they're dev test workloads or they're mm -hmm. 
Uh, there are other components that aren't relying on a full suite of services that, that you may get out of a, a true uh, public cloud. So I think, yes, there's adoption. The catalog, service catalog needs continued development uh, before we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be able to see that re-architecture of applications truly occur. Okay. So a couple, I'm oh, sorry, did you want to Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, I think um, pretty much in the enterprise, one other thing that uh, I'm seeing is a uh, lot of the enterprises are looking for a dual vendor strategy. Okay. And OpenStack sort of initially became as the second alternate option. Uh, but um, uh, as uh, Boris also mentioned, you know, you're seeing a lot of these large vendors uh, doubling down their investment with OpenStack, and the reason is the customers are driving that. And from a customer side, what's really happening is OpenStack is actually becoming the primary vendor. And then, you know, there there is a legacy applications, there is a legacy investment already done with whatever the alternate solutions are. They are not ripping that apart, but the new age applications, if you talk about Hadoop type of uh, workload, um, those workloads, they're not even thinking twice, will I run it on anything other than OpenStack? So that's the trend that's happening in the enterprise, right? And uh, I think as a community, I would also, I think uh, we all have a lot of responsibility on our shoulder to help spread this message as well. You know, it's been great when we look at all these keynote speeches. We had Wells Fargo coming in. Uh, we had Ericsson talking about it, AT&T talking about it. We're having like really, really large customers who are deploying OpenStack in a production environment coming and talking. We need to build on that and actually helps do a service to our community, OpenStack community, to make our customers, other customers also feel comfortable and make analysts feel comfortable to make recommendations to their customers, yes, OpenStack is ready, don't worry, you know, it's not yet ready, wait for another five years or something like okay. that. Yeah. So um, several of you have mentioned VMware in the context of your answer. So, um, so if you grant that probably 100% of the enterprises today are using VMware in some fashion, I guess the question I have is why, why are enterprises even looking at OpenStack? Uh, for example, I've talked to a couple of enterprise customers who've said, um, I have a private cloud. I've had it for four years now. See, it's running right there on a vBlock or on a FlexSpot. So how would you answer that? What, why, are, why do you see enterprises looking at OpenStack today? And then kind of related question is what are the use cases Right. for running op something on OpenStack versus, say, their VMware or their Hyper-V environment? I'll just take it and then pass it yeah. back, sorry. Um, from, from my side, uh, there are probably three major reasons why enterprises are looking for OpenStack. One is flexibility. Uh, the, having the ability to hack the code, make the uh, sort of unique data center differentiation for their data center. These are the large vendors, right? Uh, they want to have some differentiation. They don't want to wait for uh, you know any proprietary vendor to make the changes and for take a year or two years uh, you know to deploy it in their data center. That flexibility, they absolutely love it, and that's the benefit of open source. And the second thing is there is also the advantage of uh, really building on top of the community as opposed to relying on a one vendor solution, right? Um, more and more customers want to actually have that, uh, you know, um, no lock-in to one specific vendor. As the cloud really is evolving, you know, um, there are so many things that are converging together in a in a in, in the software world, uh, and uh, as the convergence happens, there is more and more fear of oh, what if I get locked into one or two vendors? Uh, and then, really, the third one I think is the cost as well. I, I don't think we should underestimate the benefit of uh, uh, you know uh, very low software license fee or a service fee attached with uh, uh, OpenStack compared to alternate solutions. So I, I think it's uh, it's entirely about that service catalog. I'm going to bring it back. <laughs> so Jonathan Murray from, from Warner Music has a, a really great presentation uh, about the composable enterprise. Let's think about where, where are application developers taking uh, enterprise applications in the next 15 years. And it's, it's not about traditional application development that, that sits on uh, individual servers. It's about interacting with hundreds or thousands of different API endpoints uh, and being able to consume self-service uh, service services, self-service services, uh, from a cloud. VMware is not a cloud. Everybody has private virtualization is what they have. Uh, and when people think cloud, what they want is the flexibility of something like an Amazon Web Services. So how can I get that 
that catalog available to me either in my data center or in a private capacity. That's where I think people choose something like OpenStack as a, a technology platform. So I should probably not talk about uh, OpenStack and VMware, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll take a stab at it anyway. So, <laughs> so um, I think that uh, both of you guys have touched on uh, a very important theme. Um, and that theme is uh, um, the aspect of uh, flexibility of the components that plug into OpenStack. If you look at uh, the uh, uh, survey that the foundation has uh, put out uh, to uh, all of the OpenStack users, uh, the flexibility of the underlying components is inside the top five um, business drivers for OpenStack adoption today. And uh, uh, another interesting point is that the other four are really kind of generic kind of cloud drivers, like increased agility, better engineering velocity, et cetera. So the only kind of unique business driver to OpenStack is that flexibility of underlying components. Now, onto VMware, um, I think that VMware now has a very uh, correct uh, understanding of what OpenStack is and has a very good positioning uh, of how they play with OpenStack. And uh, what, what VMware is saying, uh, and I completely agree with it, is uh, that basically um, OpenStack is this uh, glue that helps you glue together fairly heterogeneous uh, application infrastructure. And VMware is just one of the innovators specifically around uh, you know, virtualization, software-defined storage, et cetera. They're uh, kind of uh, the vendor that uh, provides lower level components primarily uh, for the IT world as we're transitioning from uh, kind of you know, the single node mentality to the completely distributed mentality. And uh, I think this is, this is, a, this is, this is a extremely important concept because um, what, what, if, if, you, if you track back a little bit to history um, and see how kind of uh, Linux and Microsoft were born, uh, both of them were kind of a, a child of a, uh, effectively hardware, software disaggregation that has happened uh, in the computing industry. Uh, in the early 80s, uh, to seed the industry, the big guys were shipping mainframes as a kind of single integrated solution, hardware, software on top, and you need to do that to pierce the market. But then as the market grew, there's been a lot of innovation, uh, particularly in the hardware area, uh, after x86 was born, and no single vendor was able to actually keep up with that innovation. So um, ultimately, there's been an alternative. Alternative became Microsoft and then eventually Linux. Uh, and the reason why uh, everybody wanted it is because uh, these were the fabrics that could pull together uh, all of the innovations that were happening in an increasingly fragmented uh, kind of x86 ecosystem. And what we're seeing today is we're moving towards the kind of completely distributed paradigm uh, there's yet another disaggregation that is happening. But now this disaggregation is happening not between just hardware um, and uh, uh, software, but disaggregation um, in the layer um, of, of uh, vendors providing fabrics for the distributed world. And uh, OpenStack's emerging is this kind of glue uh, that puts together all of the innovations in the networking and software and virtualization uh, and exposes them to everybody through a single open fabric. And that's really uh, what, what, what I believe is kind of the key value behind OpenStack. Carolyn, you were going to... Yeah, so I actually share the same uh, perspectives as, as Manju. Most of the large enterprises that I've come across have actually been interested in wanting to invest in OpenStack because it's a lower cost point and they're looking at either building completely different types of workloads, to Jesse's point, to put onto OpenStack because of the flexibility that the OpenStack framework brings, but also for them to actually think about how they've put workloads onto VMware and which of those workloads may not be suitable to stay on the VMware ecosystem. Not that they're going to entirely dump VMware and put everything on OpenStack. They're looking at what's a good mix for the strategies that they have. Yeah, so I think 
that's something we see a lot is um, clearly the perception is I get these huge savings, I get a low cost alternative. And, and that's not necessarily true today where you can't just simply rip out VMware, plug in OpenStack, and would do OpenStack a disservice as well. Um, sure, you can plug in under VMware underneath OpenStack. We can argue all day whether that's useful or not. Um, but I think I agree with Jesse and everybody else around it enables customers to take advantage of much more rapid innovation around services, also come to a much more common set of infrastructure, APIs, endpoints, rather than ha just having a single vendor dictating, for example, the APIs, how they can develop their applications, how they run applications, and ultimately get to an easy style infrastructure internally, externally, um, but really take advantage of a much, much broader ecosystem. But then again, it brings a lot of challenges to all of us, also around certification, support for all of this complexity, but ultimately it gives customers a much, much better choice and all the longer term, obviously, a lot of interesting cost okay. opportunities. So who's, who is bringing in um, OpenStack into the enterprise today? Is it, is, it the inf is, it CT is it the executives? Is it lines of business? Is it developers, infrastructure guys? Who are the ones in the enterprise who are looking at OpenStack and bringing it in? Well, so I think from, from, from my side, it actually can be almost all over the board. Mm -hmm. So if you talk about who brings OpenStack in as a conversation topic, usually it's anybody on the C level. Yeah. They've read it, they've seen it everywhere. I need to talk about OpenStack. You literally can kick in doors today about oops, talking about OpenStack. Nobody will open the doors talking about virtualization. Barely cloud probably excites people as a topic. Um, but OpenStack, everybody wants to talk about mm -hmm. it. Um, but then there are also the folks who actually want to do something meaningful, real with it. And that's where we probably see a lot of like the development teams caring about something like OpenStack where they want to like build a true pass DevOps type in environment. That's where OpenStack often comes in as sort of a real implementation opportunity. Um, and then we see a lot of uh, proof of concepts today mm -hmm. around sort of from the CTO side, uh, early IT architectures, for example, again, customers who look at the next generation data center infrastructure and how can I leverage OpenStack in this context and where would, how would it make sense to bring OpenStack into my environment and also attract internal customers to actually use it, mm -hmm. not just run a POC with a couple of nodes and then it sits idle, but really draw people onto OpenStack and develop applications and then actually broaden its, re its reach within the own, within the own company. Okay. I, I want to make uh, just one comment. I'd agree with the, what Jan said. Um, um, and, but I also want to emphasize on, on one of the really cool thing about OpenStack, which is the decoupling of uh, various uh, data center components, storage management, server management, network management. Um, I was involved with the previous incarnation of uh, private cloud in a box solution, right? With uh, you know alternate solutions to VMware. I mean, uh, alternate solutions to OpenStack. Uh, one of the pushback uh, I used to see from the customer at that time was, you know, well, in my organization I have a storage team, server team, network team. Mm -hmm. You are trying to, you know, collapse that team and trying to shake up the organization structure, and there was the resistance uh, coming from, uh, you know, the uh, the people who are actually operating the data center, right? Um, and I don't see that resistance with OpenStack. Uh, I have a feeling uh, part of the credit goes to how the OpenStack itself is architected. You know, you still have the ability to have a data center administrator specifically focusing for network and storage mm -hmm. and server. They get to do their specific roles and responsibilities. And when we were getting the pushback from the operators, it wasn't about job security. It was really about they know that there is something very true value that they add from each of their so, you know, silos, right? The network silo, storage silo, silo. And if you try to bring all the pieces together, it shakes up the uh, in integrity of their operation. And you know, I, I'm seeing that that's one of the nice thing about OpenStack, and you've got even the operators now really embracing OpenStack in addition to the CIOs, CEOs. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think we're kind of approaching this question the wrong way. Uh, if, if organizations are talking about bringing OpenStack in because it's OpenStack, it's an early adopter, and they're picking it just because of a name or, or it's the newest technology. Mm -hmm. What we see in our conversations is that the C-suites and the boards of directors in, in enterprises are saying to IT ops, look, you need a cloud strategy. Everybody else is doing, we need, a, we need a cloud strategy. And on the flip side, we've got engineering saying, look, we need self-service. And today, they're going out and they're getting that through whatever means they, they can, swiping a credit card with public clouds or, or other avenues to be able to, to move at the velocity they're being asked to move. 
And so IT operations have been stuck in the middle saying, well, I've got this, this virtualization platform that lets me dole out VMs, and that's great. I've got cost advantages of, of virtualization, but I have no mechanism to actually deliver self-service today. Uh, and to do that with, with that catalog that the, the uh, uh, engineering teams are looking for. So to me, OpenStack represents a solution to that problem, and it has become the de facto solution to that problem from an open source perspective, and that's how it's coming up uh, into organizations where, uh, where the pilots are, are not just in the CTO office or, or they really be considered more than just a, a, a test case. If we're, if we're gonna talk about actual adoption and not experimentation, uh, that's where we've seen those initiatives starting from. Okay, um, moving ahead. So I, when I talk to enterprises, one of the most frequent questions I get asked is, um, they, they say, "How come? Why are there so many vendors in OpenStack world?" And and I drill down that to find out what that means. A lot of times, what they're saying is, "There's a lot. Of, they are confused about who they should go with, who should they work with." You know, for example, Oracle just released OpenStack on Solaris, so now you've got another version of OpenStack, and and that's causing a lot of confusion in the enterprise today. So, two, two how versions, would you answer two that? Two versions question? of uh, Oracle OpenStack: one on Solaris yeah, and right. one on Oracle Linux. Independent, so, so, so how two distributions. It, so uh, the question I have for you, are there too many vendors in the OpenStack ecosystem today? And how, how should an enterprise, what should an enterprise think about when they try to decide who they should work with? Yeah, I mean, are, are, there, are there too many car manufacturers? Like, <laughs> it's really, it's about consumption options. Okay. Uh, and each vendor is bringing something unique with their distribution uh, or with, with their model of bringing OpenStack uh, into an enterprise. We've got a very different model than than Red Hat or, or Piston or, or Mantis. So uh, I think building that ecosystem is really about building choice in how we bring OpenStack into, into these groups. And from, from an operations perspective, it's really the commercial support that you're going to get. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not all the vendors are going to give you the same level of commercial support. So it's down to what your business requires and what your needs are. And you might choose one vendor over the other, not necessarily just from a technology perspective, but mainly from the commercial support for what you're trying to deliver. So um, I think that I, I agree completely that the fact that there's so many vendors uh, on the market today um, is confusing. And I think uh, it actually, really honestly kind of stifles the adoption of OpenStack. But at the same time, uh, it's a new big kind of emerging market. Everybody wants a piece of it, so everybody's in it. And uh, I think that I mentioned that uh, um, this year uh, is the year of enterprise adoption. Uh, I think that also this year we're gonna start seeing some consolidation on the market, and I think we're starting to see it already. So some of the Earlier guys are starting to dissolve, uh, and there's going to be some people buying some people, and it's going to start happening, and it's going to happen probably a, a lot of it's going to happen this year. Um, so, and as far as you know, which vendor to work with? Work with Marantis, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obligated to say that. So I think I need to object now. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I think. Well, we all want to further OpenStack, obviously, in the mm -hmm. enterprise. But in, as Caroline said, also, it also really depends on the customer to some extent, on their knowledge level, their expectation, what they need around support, what they want around support. And then we all experience various levels of readiness for OpenStack deployments. We have a lot of customers who want to have the same enterprise model for OpenStack than they have from their prior engagements with vendors like us, for example. Right. Um, so that's where obviously we have um, an opportunity for them using a distribution model with updates, security patches, certification, ecosystem, et cetera, et cetera. And there's also a set of customers who are very, very keen on being at the bleeding edge, very, very early adopters, where I think the consumption model with OpenStack is different. You don't you can't do these massive upgrades um, because they're very disruptive. That's why everybody's stuck on Grizzly who actually does something <laughs> meaningful because it hurts right. uh, to move forward. And I think longer term, I personally believe um, the consumption model, how you consume OpenStack bits will change in the long term where it might move more to like a CI type model where you just get continuous innovation and pick feed based on features rather than like major releases and have like big upgrades. And again, the community made big strides around upgrades already, being able to do rolling upgrades, those things. But it took a long time just to get like to 
a hard, or defined core, like with Oslo messaging, for example, mm -hmm. defining APIs, interfaces, you know, get all, all the discipline in, which we all have been living through in the Linux days for many years, and we live through it again. I always say there are no, no new problems, they're just people who have met. Um, so I think we, we go through the same cycle again here, but I think we also see a much different velocity with those advanced customers who really right. want to move forward much, much more aggressive than I think the classic enterprise customer has been. I want to make uh, two points. One is, uh, you know, we talked about why are our customers looking at OpenStack. Um, uh, and that's, you know, one of the primary things we highlighted was flexibility. And that is one of the reasons why you have a lot of vendors. Um, different customers have different needs. And that evolution is happening right now. I'd agree with Boris that there will be consolidation uh, in this year, next year. But customers are also uh, not sure what exactly they want. And not every vendor is really uh, promising the flexibility that customer wants. I think there is that challenge. You know, if you go with me, then you have to work with this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And that sort of like still, in some ways, locks them. There is that, uh, um, you know, in terms of how do you choose uh, your favorite vendor, I think, uh, you know, the advice to the uh, customer is to make a list of what are the things that you would like to accomplish. There's different uh, vendors who are going to meet those requirements. So, you know, you do have to make a priority. If the cost is a priority, you'll have to make that as a, your primary reasoning in terms of how you choose your customer. If it's the flexibility, where do you want the flexibility? Do you want the flexibility at the infrastructure level, software level, orchestration level, you know, uh, or the ability to pick and choose different uh, components, you know, you'll have to make those decisions. Then I would say, instead of, yes, you know, I would like you to pick Hitachi data systems, but <laughs> I would also say in the interest of the community, you will have to really think through what are the priorities for you. Okay. I, I, I have a, one more pre prepared question. So if you any folks out there have questions they want to, from the audience that they want to bring to the panel, I would start walking over to the mic. Um, but, but the last pre prepared question I have is this. So uh, a lot of you have talked about there are still challenges today with OpenStack, particularly for getting it adopted in the enterprise. So if I could make you, each of you the benevolent dictator of OpenStack for six months, oh dear. right? What, which, what is one or two things you would want to see happen with an OpenStack that you think would make it uh, easier to f make it more uh, adoptable to the, for the enterprise? Ladies first. <laughs> Great. Give it to the woman for this one. Um, if I could be the benevolent dictator of OpenStack for six months, I would want uh, two things primarily. Um, much better stability and uh, much better um, high availability features. Because for, for true enterprise adoption, and if you think about the production workloads that a lot of them have, it needs to be stable and where's the stability, where the stability comes when you need to actually be able to do an upgrade of your nodes and the rolling upgrades between nodes, the application shouldn't suffer. And so high availability, especially when you're competing with something like VMware has been able to do, that is what a lot of them are looking for. And I've, I've come across many um, people who are in the OpenStack space that just go, oh, they're, they're doing it their way. We're going to do it our way. We're going to rewrite the meaning of HA. And I don't think that's the right way to go about it. So now I get to dictate, I guess, <laughs> for six months. By the time we are done, it's like f four years down the road here. So, <laughs> um, so I think, well, you mentioned a couple of really important topics, which actually go into, I think there needs to be, in some cases, more prescriptiveness around OpenStack and the deployment types, especially, again, around HA, just for core services and all the other services, because today, yeah, choice is great, but too much choice might also not lead to a very successful implementation. And well, we all at the summit here designed some, we all beaten networking up plenty. Everybody knows that's a real weak point today and, and a real trouble point, especially around scaling. Also brings the whole topic in around yeah, partners and vendors and lock-in and whatnot. So it would be great to really focus and get like networking in shape. I think deployment itself is also really important. Unify deployment, get to a point where you actually can easily scale up your environments. Mm -hmm. um, what we also have seen recently is a lot of interest from the HPC community to introduce bare metal into OpenStack, um, which opens up a whole another can of worms around 
around how you do this. Uh, of course, the answer would be ironic, but there would be a lot of discussions to be had on whether that's the right approach, at least today, how it works. So I think, yeah, deployment is really important. Again, uh, being prescriptive around architecture, at least at a foundation level, how can you then easily just scale up your architecture and out, and interoper interoperability between vendors um, as well. So making interoperability easier, certification easier, so you can, as was said earlier, you can easily match vendors, for example, mix and match components as, as you want. So, Jesse, I'll leave you some stuff. <laughs> yeah, so I, because I'm gonna take the, the tree analogy back. So strong, strong trunk, many branches. Uh, Def core and the work there, I think is, is really critical to define interoperability in, in that tr uh, trunk. Uh, and then we need to look at the service catalog uh, and co compare that to what you can get from true other cloud services. So load balancing is a perfect example. Any modern web application needs load balancing, an effective load balancing uh, to, to be put into production. And today, OpenStack doesn't have a good story there. It needs to be split out as its own project and considered another leaf or another branch on the tree. Uh, so it's, it's really, it's an evaluation of, uh, and, and I actually disagree with, with you, I think uh, we should not try to emulate VMware. I think we should build an architecture that, that solves that, that self-service issue uh, the customers that we're interfacing with are looking to add this in extension to what they have today and, and really develop new workloads. And um, Oh good, now we're gonna get a debate about it. No, 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 we're not. Actually, I'm gonna say it to you, I'm not saying that we have to emulate VMware, but I'm saying that you can't turn around and say VMware is doing HA wrong when it works. Oh, it works great. But do it so that, make it so that it's understandable to the people that are already using it. Not emulate. Understood. Uh, but yeah, it, trunk, trunk and branches. Figure out what, what are the services that are needed to uh, continue to drive application development. Okay. So, a very short comment. I think that OpenStack now is no longer a product. It's just a, a community, like an Apache foundation with a bunch of people developing a bunch of stuff. And um, I'm also a little bit concerned that the dev core stuff that is driven by, by the board is a little bit overcomplicated and might take very long time. Um, it is absolutely the right initiative, um, but uh, the, the first thing that I would do if I was a benevolent dictator, I would narrow significantly the scope of what OpenStack is and focus just on that because uh, I'm not exactly agreeing with the leaves and branches. I think there's way too many leaves and branches. So now with Trove, we're going into the database management, we're doing queuing as a service, load balancing as a service, everything as a service. Um, I mean, we can, you, can, you can sprawl the features indefinitely and that's the problem. If the people weren't sprawling the features and splitting things up to have their own piece, but instead just focused on getting the core important components to work, uh, we'd have a much better product. So next time when somebody comes in and says, I want to do a database as a service, or this is a service, I'm sorry, this is not OpenStack, go do it somewhere else. If you want to be part of OpenStack, go fix Neutron. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, I'll make it quick. I think uh, I'd agree with uh, most of the comments uh, Carolyn made and uh, Jesse as well as uh, Jan and Boris. Um, I think uh, me being, uh, you know, lo looking from my perspective, most of the customers I interact with are the enterprise customers. Um, uh, Caroline made a comment about stability, adding the enterprise grade uh, functionality. So far we've discussed about what do enterprises want and uh, why are they looking at OpenStack? And uh, the next piece of the puzzle is what's missing in OpenStack that enterprises really want. You know, if I listen into some of the keynote speeches, you know, in, uh, Glenn from uh, well, Fargo talked about you know um, compliance being one of the things, and you know reason uh, you know that that's they have to have certain type of backup mechanism. They have to have certain types of uh, rules and regulations that they need to follow in terms of where their data gets stored, for instance. Um, you know that's that's one like a narrow f set of functionality um, and uh, Boris was saying we need to narrow down from various different branches of focus for OpenStack. I do believe that that's a good strategy and if, by doing that we will help strengthening the uh, the pieces that are now matured or unmaturing, 
right? You know, Nova, Cinder, Neutron. I do think that they all are missing some of the enterprise features and functionalities. I would probably double down on that and try to, you know, make them ready for some of the gaps that enterprises really are trying to fill right now. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah. So this gentleman's been very patient, so you could ask your question quickly, we'll get one or two people. Well, since I've been so patient, I'll also make a comment. Okay. <laughs> to you benevolent dictators out there, just underscore, remember, at the end of the day, it's all about business value, despite all the technical deep dives and technical branches and rabbit holes that we have to go down in the community. Now I'll ask my question. So do you have any war stories of any enterprises that have gone down a path of implementing one distribution of uh, OpenStack and have either stopped due to maturity of a particular release of OpenStack or have found that, hey, we really need to jump to a different distribution because of things that are emphasized in that particular uh, vendor's distribution? I, I have an example. I'm not going to name the vendors, obviously. Um, I do have an example. It goes back to the flexibility. Um, uh, you know, not having the flexibility to pick and choose the type of hypervisor that the specific customer wanted was a reason to move out of one distribution to another distribution. I'm sorry, we actually have to cut off because of the time. They're giving me the, sorry about that. I'm going to tell John he can't answer this question. Sorry. Oh, come on, John. You should, answer, you should ask a question. <laughs> Just because I want people to get out to the next session. So, um, if, uh, can you all stay for a few minutes if people yeah. come up and have questions? So um, I want to thank you for your time, um, for the panelists, for joining us today, for all of you uh, for participating. Again, if you have some questions, uh, come on up. Um, we'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you.